Hey guys, it's Reverend Sean over at the Center Path, and we're going to continue on with our basics in Buddhism, and we're going to go over one of the biggest icons you'll see in Buddhism, well, at least some part of Buddhism. I'm going to explain a little bit about the history and what this all means. This is the Buddhist flag. So here we're talking about this, which is considered the Buddhist flag in, in most places, especially uh, kind of the Theravada areas, which is Southeast Asia. Some parts you'll see them in Japan and uh, maybe in China, but mostly you'll see them in Sri Lanka, um, Vietnam, Thailand, places like that. At least that's where I've seen them the most. Also the United States. This flag, which has the five colors, you got the blue, the yellow, the orange, or the red, the white, the orange, and then this banner at the bottom or at the end, if you will, of um, all the colors put together it means something. And we're going to go over each one of those individually. Now, this flag was originally um, part of a, a bigger banner that was used to, to surround stupas, and this has to do with the colors that emanated from the Buddha when he achieved enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. Now, that part there is where things get confusing because we say talk about the aura itself, the different colors of the aura. Now in the Tibetan tradition or the Vajrayana, they say a lot of times the rainbow body. And that would be this this set of colors down at the bottom. It's kind of like this iridescent, like all of those colors, a rainbow, really iridescent, beautiful color that emanated uh, from him. Traditionally, this is what we see in the script, in the in the, the writings, the scriptures, the, the teachings, and that kind of stuff. So that's what that one means there at the bottom. So it's a culmination of all four, all other five of those, okay, being uh, whatever, it is, blue, yellow, red, white, and orange. Now, this was kind of developed in this shape, which is the common shape that you see most, like the American flag, the Chinese flag, the Sri Lankan flag, whatever, the country flags, it's the same shape, and that was kind of suggested by a guy named Henry Steele Olcott, who you can still see a, a statue of him in Colombo at the train station, and he was an American who um, kind of helped start the Theosophical Society with Madame Blavatsky. It's an interesting thing that happened in the United States and then ended up moving to uh, India and some other places and really helped some groups mm, be exposed to Buddhism, including the, um, the Americans. He wrote a book called The Catechism of Buddhism, so he was trying to like correlate some of the things from Christianity to Buddhism and back and forth so that they would be easier understood. Well, in the 1880s, Remember, Sri Lanka, this is where this all kind of started, was under British rule. It was, it was a British-ruled place. And there were nationalists in Sri Lanka that wanted to maintain the Sri Lankan national identity. And part of that had to do with Buddhism. Now, Buddhism was slowly in decline, partially because Christianity had come in because of the British. And a lot of favors were given to those who had converted to Christianity, but not to Buddhism. So there was a kind of a, a resurgence, if you will, of Buddhist um, nationalism in Sri Lanka. And one of the things that they needed to do was come up with some, basically, advertising and some icons. So in, in 1885, this flag was kind of presented. It was developed at that time. Later on, it is slowly grew and grew, and it was accepted in the, the World Federation of Buddhists in 1950, 51, 52, and, that area, and then we see it more and more and more throughout the, the, the world, actually. And you see it um, displayed as a banner of uh, advertisement, uh, hey, something's going on here, this is our... This is our flag. Here we are. We're Buddhists, and we're doing a Visak or Hanumatsuri or or some kind of puja offering or whatever it is that we're doing a, a wedding, a celebration, something like that. And I've hung probably a thousand of these things at the temples I've been at, and I've seen some of these things. I mean, humongous. I don't know, 50 feet wide by 110 feet long or something like that. When I was in uh, both Vietnam and uh, Sri Lanka, so there were some giant ones we saw there. And so we see this, and we have to look at what do the colors mean. So we have the first color here up at the top, which is the blue. The blue has to do with compassion. This is the universal concept of taking care, right? And, and having compassion, the Metta Sutra, and those kind of things. It's a fundamental part of Buddhist teachings, okay? The second one here, we have um, 
uh, yellow, sorry, right there. Yellow is the middle path. The middle path, the center path, right? Center path, the middle way. It has to do with, like, you know, it's not nihilistic, it's not hedonistic, it's somewhere in the middle. This is the basic teachings of Buddha. The Buddha was always talking about the middle path. Remember, the, there's a sutra, or the, the teaching of the, the lute, the guitar kind of thing. Like if the string is too tight, it'll break. If it's not tight enough, it won't play, and it has to be tuned just like our minds and just like our practices. You have to have them well tuned. The third color here, we have the red. Um, red has to do um, with the wisdom, the blessing of the Buddha, the blessing of Buddhism, the blessing of the teachings, the, um, let's see, I have written here, the fortune, dignity, red's a big color you see in Asia, it's, it's a very, very auspicious color, and it shows like, you know, vibrance and, and life and the stuff like that, so that's, that's some of that concept there. White down here is the purity of the Dharma, think of the purity of snow, it is unstained, or the purity of something clear, basically, like clear water, remember we're working to get rid of the defilements and we're get rid of um, uh, the, the, the mud and the muck that's in our minds. This is the clearing part of that. The, the Dharma helps clear that, the Dhamma, if you will. But the Dharma teachings here. Now the one down here, this is orange, this is kind of typically the color you see the monks wear, especially in Sri Lanka they seem to wear this kind of color. It exemplifies the Sangha. Okay, or the teachers, and it says the Mahasangha, which is the, the the teachers, the elder teachers, and stuff like that in Buddhism. So um, that there you go. So compassion, and then we have uh, yellow is the middle way, and then the the blessings of the Buddha and the the teachings of the Dharma and the Sangha, and through there. And now the last one through here. This is that that iridescent kind of color. Um, there's a word for it in Pali. I'll put it down here at the bottom. Uh, forget pronouncing it, it's not really important, but it, think of iridescence, okay, iridescence or probably like illuminescence, you know, like it's an aura, you know, it, what, what color is an aura, it's not supposed to be yellow, it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be all the colors, like a rainbow body, this is what they say in Tibetan, or the, the Vajrayana uh, version of Buddhism, if you will. We don't really hear rainbow body in Zen, as far as I know, or in Chan, which I don't, you know, that's what I do. Um, so it don't, we don't hear it there as much. You hear it more in the esoteric stuff, of course. Now, as a secular Buddhist, this is still a great icon to um, meditate on. It's, a, it's an excellent object of meditation. You can do each one of these through here and kind of like, you know, what does that mean to me and how can I explain it better and how can I explain it to me? Because you have to own the information in order to uh, be able to kind of teach it or anything like that. Okay? So there we go. That's the Buddhist flag. Now, now, what's the difference between this and Tibetan prayer flags? Well, Tibetan prayer flags are more colors, and they're usually individual, and they are stamped with usually some kind of icon or maybe even um, words in Tibetan. And those are prayers, so they're usually hung in different places. These we'll see hung from flagpoles, of course, because it's a flag, but you'll also see them across roads and things like that as banners and carried by people as flags and stuff like that as an icon, as, a, as, a, as, a, as the identifier of the Buddhist faith, if you will, and or Buddhist activities or Buddhist celebrations or whatever it is. Now, Tibetan prayer flags, you don't really see that way. You have them tied to trees and you have them tied around stupas and tied around rock formations, uh, cairns they're called, and you have um, many times in windy places. And the reason is the, the, the wind will take a string or two off every once in a while. And these, these prayer flags, or Tibetan prayer flags, are designed to fall apart. That's our impermanence, that's our constant change, and that's our prayers for all beings. You know, that maybe these beings, uh, these prayers will fly away into the ten directions, which we'll talk about later. So they're totally different, and you don't usually see this flag in Tibetan um, or Vajrayana celebrations because there's a lot of color going on, and a lot of, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance with Tibetan already, so this is going to get lost in kind of the the muddled uh, everything that you see. That may be there. I mean, we just don't see it very often yet. It's just not as common. They have a lot of their own flags. Um, in Zen, we tend to see no flags because they're pretty minimalist, right? The same as Chan is a little bit throwing a little teaspoon of Taoism and a teaspoon of Zen, you know, which one's which. Um, so this is, this is where we see this now. Now, in 1963, in Vietnam, this was made illegal. Okay, and everybody knows the the picture of the monk who had 
burned himself to death in 1963. Uh, I'll put his name down here. You can look it up. It's everywhere. If you put in Buddha's suicide, you're going to see his picture. So he was protesting the quashing, smashing down of Buddhism in Vietnam by Christian religious people. Okay, especially the government at the time was kind of leaning towards the, this this Roman Catholic kind of idea, and they were there was a lot of argument, and they were trying to get rid of all the Buddhist holidays and some Buddhist celebrations and stuff like that. In this, this monk decided to uh, burn himself in protest. Now it wasn't really against the war; a lot of people think it was, but there, that was only a very small part of it. There was kind of like more political stuff going on. So. Um, Later on, we saw it take hold, and you see it a lot more in Vietnam. When I was there for the VSOC last year, was it VSOC last year? Yes, 2019. There was tons of these flags. It was beautiful. So um, use it as your own symbol of uh, object of meditation. It's a great thing to do. You know, don't get too stuck on it, though. But, but look up the different meanings in through here. I'll try and post them somewhere on here, and I'll post them down in my blog. You can read, which I'll put a link down at the bottom. You can see that. Also, go to the centeredpath.org um, and download you know, the information, and you can download information on the other videos I've done. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, and leave a comment if you've seen this or you have one of these, or if you've learned anything else. Um, We'll go from there. Now, each time I do these little videos, they're to get a different, a little bit more information on Buddhism. We'll go over some of the other icons, tools, um, doodads and worthy gigs, basically, which is like the Dorje and the, the bell, which I have around here somewhere. There's a Dorje right there. Okay, and we have a bell right there. Okay, we have those. And different, you know, icons which we see and use. I have shakujos and all kinds of different cool things that are used in Buddhism but don't have to be used in order for you to practice. Um, you can let all that stuff go. It's just, those are just tools. Okay? Anyway, this is Reverend Sean over the Centered Path. And I you know, hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Let me know how it's going. And I uh, hope you guys take care. Uh, I'm going to do a lot more. We have some stuff coming up on a Buddhist Pope. What does that even mean? and some other tools, like I said, and we're continuing on with the basics of Buddha under the Buddhist cheat sheet, which you can find on the website. So anyway, this is Reverend Sean. Talk to you guys soon. Hope you do well. Take care.